Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Pennsylvania students, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. PACAC is a nonprofit association comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admissions counselors, independent educational consultants, and other professionals responsible for guiding students through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. Thank you for joining us tonight. A few housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off as attendees, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at PACAC.org. That's P-A-C-A-C dot org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. That's PACAC.org, P-A-C-A-C dot org. I'm now going to shop, stop sharing my screen and turn it over to our presenter from Bridgewater College this evening. Good evening and thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Jarrett Smith. I am the Director of Admissions and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to come and listen to me talk about Bridgewater and find out if Bridgewater might be the right fit for you. This is an exciting time in Bridgewater's history. When I was a freshman in the fall of 1999, Enrollment was about 1,100 students, and as you can see here, our enrollment has grown to almost 1,600 undergraduate students. Also, when I was a freshman in the fall of 99, the college did not have any graduate degree programs on campus. Um, so currently, we have four graduate degree programs, and we'll talk about those next. As you can see here on the slide, in terms of gender, we're pretty evenly split between male and female. Actually, this year's freshman class was slightly, we had slightly more males uh, join us than we did females. Um, just over 30% of our students identify as having a diverse race or ethnicity background. Uh, three quarters of our students do come from the state of Virginia. Um, our largest out of state um, population of students is from Maryland, followed by Delaware, and then North Carolina and Pennsylvania. About 30% of our students do participate in one of our NCAA Division III athletics teams, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we come down the line as well. So not only did we have growth in our enrollment um, over the past roughly two decades, um, but we've also had some growth and some um, academic um, enhancements as well. So we recently switched to four divisions, four academic divisions, and within those divisions, we have over 31 majors, over 15 minors, and our four graduate school programs. What this means, you know, in terms of a student's experience, you know, with a student enrollment of just under 1,600 undergraduate students, the average class size is 21. We have a 13 to 1 professor to student or student to professor ratio, excuse me. I had a senior seminar class that I was one of four students in. So you're really going to receive a personalized education from day one that you're on campus. It also means that um, the professors you work with your freshman year are gonna be the same professors you work with all four years that you're here. So when it comes time to apply for grad school or apply for an internship or apply for a job coming into your senior year, you're able to go and talk with a professor who's more like a mentor to you. And you're able to talk with them and ask them to write a letter of recommendation on your behalf. And it's going to talk and sound more like a personal testimony to the person that you are. And they're going to talk about your strengths and what unique qualities you bring to that position or to that grad school opportunity. It's not going to be a skeleton letter that they just fill in your name and say, oh, yes, they came to class every day and they had good grades. You know, they're going to really talk about you as a person and your strengths. What I like to highlight here with our four grad school programs is we currently have four. All of these four, each of these ones has a five-year component to it. So a dual, what, we, what we're calling a dual um, enrollment program. So in five years, you'll receive a master's or bachelor's degree and a master's degree in each one of these programs. We're gonna look to add more grad school programs. There's no, there's no hiding that, that we're gonna look to add additional programs, but we're not gonna add an MBA. We're not going to do that because the world of higher ed doesn't need another MBA. 
what we're going to do is look to add grad school programs that make sense to our students. It's very intentional for us. We're not all of a sudden going to add 10,000 graduate students and become a large university. That's not who Bridgewater is. We're going to remain small. Um, we have some aspirations to grow enrollment to be about 2,000 students. We think 2,000 students still allows us to be small enough that you're going to know your professors and the professors are going to know you and you're going to be able to maintain that intimate personal relationship with them. But we feel like 2,000 students allows us to be a little bit more impactful for our students as well. So yes, we're going to grow enrollment. We're going to look to add some additional grad school programs as well in a very intentional way for us. This past spring, the spring of 20, that semester, um, we opened the John Kenny for Learning Commons. And on campus, we either call it the Learning Commons or the FLC. This, per, this building opened literally the week before COVID hit and shut down campus and sort of halted everyone's education as it's going on through the spring semester. And what we did with this building is we took our library that had been standing for 60 plus years and we invested over $13 million in it. And it's a complete renovation of the interior and we added a 10,000 square foot addition to this. It is now a one stop shop for students and their academic needs. So um, it has all of our traditional library services in it. So everything you can imagine that a traditional library has with some up updated features as well. So we put our career services um, office in this building. They have an outpost location here. So if you want to go in and, and talk with career services about internships, about um, study skills, you know, maybe do a personality placement um, because you're undecided as a major, you've got those opportunities there. There's a technology support and not, oh my gosh, my computer's broke or hey, there's no paper in the printer, but I'm working on this project and it's, I, you know, maybe I can't get my Excel formula to work right quite right. Or maybe I'm in PowerPoint and I can't get my video to play just like I need it to. It's more of a technology help center than it is support in terms of needing something corrected because it's wrong. All of our academic tutors are in this building and our peer coaches as well. And so there's academic tutors for each of the, um, for every class there is on campus, a student tutor for that, and then student peer coaches as well. And the peer coach is there to help students get organized for the semester. So literally at the beginning and end, and or beginning of each semester, you can sit down with your academic coach and pull out your calendar and pull out your um, class schedule, and they'll sit down and help you get organized with your syllabus and, and help you map things out for the semester. Our writing center is there. It's also students um, supported and um, student led. So you can walk in with a paper at any stage and, and get receive help with that. We have multimedia production um, rooms there as well. Uh, Smitty's Cafe is much like a Panera or Starbucks. It's a cash operation on campus. So you can add bucks, add money, what we call a BC bucks. You can add BC bucks there and, and go use those funds there. Something a little different with our education is we have a May term. Um, so we have traditional spring, fall and spring semesters right now. Uh, we are in the midst of our fall semester. It will end usually the second week in December. We'll come back then the first week of January. Graduation is typically the first weekend in May. And then for the next three weeks of May, we have what we call May term. That students can take one class, meets every day, uh, for those three weeks. And you have different opportunities. You can take a class that meets here on campus and meets like a traditional class does. You can meet, you can take a class that meets here on campus and then takes what I like to say are, are field trips. So for a period of time we had a, um, um, it was called um, museums and galleries and they studied the business side of the museums and galleries and went to Richmond and to DC um, to study the back side of it, not just the art, but the design features of it as well. Um, and then we have classes that travel abroad, um, internationally abroad, and also domestically abroad. This past um, two, two days ago, we had a sociology um, class called Discovering New York Through Its Food, and they traveled through the different boroughs of New York, um, eating, sort of eating their way through the boroughs in terms of a so sociology, understanding the culture and the people a little bit more. And they also have an opportunity to do internships during your May semester. May term, two of those are May terms are included in your four years at Bridgewater. So over the course of your four years, you have two, two May terms included in your tuition and fees. 
we have a Flory Honors Program, or our Flory Honors Program is our honors program on campus. Um, one of the nice features with it is this picture here represents or is showing this um, this bullet here, the exclusive honors retreat activities and events, and then the Flory Honors Oxford experience. So every four years, um, Dr. Brandon Marsh, the program director will take a group of students to study over in Oxford in England, which is really neat. Um, our honors program, there are some academic requirements here of a 3.8 cumulative GPA or higher. Um, if a student chooses not to apply test optional, um, they have to have at least a 1270 or a 27. Um, if the student does apply test optional, then they take a little bit more um, critical look at, at the strength of their curriculum and the courses that they've taken over their four years. There is an additional feature here of a $3,000 scholarship for students that are invited to participate in the honors program. Now, one thing about campus, um, we're in a pretty rural section of Virginia. We're located in um, the Shenandoah Valley. So uh, Virginia is in essence a triangle and Bridgewater is here on the Western side of the state. We like to say we are two hours away from everything. So we are about two hours away from DC, two hours away from Richmond, which is the state capital. You can be to the west, uh, excuse me, you can be to the Pennsylvania, Maryland border just north of Hagerstown there, um, just south of Carlisle and just over an hour. Um, and we're about an hour, hour and a half outside of um, Roanoke, Virginia and about two hours outside of Blacksburg. Um, but we are in a pretty rural section of Virginia. Um, so one thing we don't have um, is as many professors on campus as some of the large universities do. But what we do to supplement that is we have an endowed lectures and a convocations program. So we bring people from across the globe into campus to talk with our students about different things. Here on the slide, you can see a, a sampling of four recent ones that we've had. Uh, Monica Lewinsky, she came last year excuse me, two falls ago now. Um, she's a social activist, talked about cyberbullying and what that means and how it impacted her life and what she's doing to help correct that. Um, Captain Mark Kelly is an astronaut and the um, wife, uh, excuse me, his wife is um, Gabby, oh my, I'm drawing a blank now, from Arizona, um, Gabby Gifford. Um, Dr. Bennett Amalu, he was the, he's the concussion doctor, so um, if you've ever seen the movie Concussion uh, that Will Smith was in, Will Smith uh, portrayed Dr. Bennett Amalu when he was here or through that movie. And then Jerry Greenfield was one of our most popular ones. He is the co-founder of Ben and Jerry's and brought over a thousand cups of ice cream um, for the students that night and faculty and staff that, that were in attendance. But we do this to broaden our students' perspectives and thoughts outside of the classroom, outside of Bridgewater, and being a, a bit more of a global perspective to campus for them. So the surrounding area of Bridgewater. Um, the town of Bridgewater is consistently rated number one or number two safest town in Virginia. The residents of the town is about 6,000 people, so it is pretty small. And as soon as you're off of the college's property, you run into the residential section of campus or of town. So um, there is no hiding from it. Um, very oftentimes we have our students throughout the community walking and attending different things going on in Bridgewater. And very oftentimes we have town residents on campus as well, uh, walking through, biking through, attending different programs and events on our campus. We have a very good town and gown relationship. Um, so it is, uh, it is a nice place to be. Uh, we're just south of Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is a larger city, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 60,000 residents there very diverse population in Harrisonburg. The Harrisonburg City Schools have over 50 different languages spoken within it. Um, so the area, you may think of hills and uh, you were sort of at the Blue Ridge, foot of the Blue Ridge and a, and a rural section, but it is a very diverse population as well. Um, so downtown Harrisonburg or Harrisonburg itself um, has, if you draw a 10 mile radius around Bridgewater, there's approximately 30,000 college students here. So the Harrisonburg economy is driven by the college dollar with the college students in mind, which is nice. Um, so there's every eatery you can think of, shopping area, the downtown area, Harrisonburg area has a, a nightlife side to it, a residence or a historical side to it, an art side to it. And then as I've mentioned a couple of times now, we're in a rural section. So we have national forests to our east and to our west. And if you enjoy doing outdoor recreation activities, you can continue those hobbies um, when you're on campus as well.
the town of Bridgewater also has um, free amenities for students. So it's a free par three golf course and a mini golf course, um, an ice skating rink in the, in the winter time. And then the Sipe Center is a um, theater that recently opened showing live productions, has different um, musical performances, theatrical performances, and also has um, videos or shows and movies as well. We are a residential school, so students are required to live on campus all four years and guaranteed housing all four years that they're on campus with us. Um, there is basically for undergraduate students, there's one exception for that. If they are home address, if their parents live within a 40 mile radius of campus, they are allowed to be what we call commuter students. Um, but most of our students, over 85%, live on campus with us. We have traditional residence halls, um, would be two people per room with a community style bath. Uh, we have seven of those facilities on campus. We have our cottages. Those are houses on the perimeter of campus that are set up like an apartment. Each cottage holds anywhere from eight to 12 students, just depending on which house you're looking at. The Wampler Towers is a 192 bed apartment complex on campus. So those are four person um, apartments. Stone Village is similar to, to the Wampler Towers. It's a um, apartment style living, but there are houses and each house is divided up into apartments. So um, there's a larger size house that has four person, four apartments in them, and a smaller size that has two, four, two apartments in them, excuse me. Those are really nice hardwood floors, granite countertops, and a ton of space. And then the Crimson Inn, the college owns a hotel that is located on Main Street in Bridgewater, which is about three blocks off of campus, um, but it is a, a nice option as well that students have. Every student's allowed to have a car on campus all four years that they're here. Uh, the parking fee for the year is $250. We have a very active campus. You would be hard pressed to find a student on campus that would say that they are only a student. As I said earlier, about 30% of our student body participates in a varsity level sports. We have over 60 different clubs and organizations, different social groups, intellectual groups, religious and ethnic groups. One of the groups on campus is called SEAT, and that is a Student Engagement Activities uh, Club. And what they do is provide entertainment on the weekends that students are on campus. So their sole purpose is to bring entertainment to campus for students to be involved in. So maybe they're showing a movie that just got released out of the theaters. They may be uh, bringing a game show to campus. They may bring a slam poet to campus, um, all sorts of different things. At homecoming, they do um, a big bonfire and fireworks and some sort of activity Friday night before football games as well. We have a number of honor societies, both academic based and service based. We have no Greek life, no social Greek life on campus um, and a variety of different music ensembles both vocal and instrumental as well. Campus recreation is a big portion too. Uh, about 75% of the students participate in one of the 30 different intramural sports. Pardon me for a second. Intramurals range from less active things like chess and ping pong to more active things. You can see here, this is a, a picture of the of flag football. We do volleyball. Um, knocker ball is something that's come on of late, and that is soccer inside of a big bubble. You kind of squeeze yourself down into a bubble. And then the past, wasn't this happened this past spring because of COVID, but the previous two or three springs before that, we had life um, battleship. So we have canoes and you have teams of five and you are in your canoe trying to sink the other team's canoe. And the first one to sink loses and it's a round robin tournament. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to watch, didn't participate. Athletics, I've mentioned it several times. We are division three for athletics. We are part of the ODAC, the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. We basically have every major mainstream uh, sport on campus except for wrestling. Um, we have a variety of different um, opportunities there with our equestrian program, different type of riding, um, a cheerleading and dance team as well. We are consistently in the top half of our conference for victories and championships and have won 11 national championships as well. Dining, so you're gonna live here on campus with us. We're gonna make sure you get an education and, and sort of entertain you with clubs and organizations. Um, dining on campus is really is really nice. Right now we have an unlimited swipes is what we call them. So the dining hall opens at 7 a.m., closes at midnight. 
and students are allowed to come and go as frequently as they would like through that facility. Everything is made here on campus um, and they try to locally source as much as possible. So um, if you were to go into the dining hall and get a slice of pizza, that pizza crust was made here that day. If you were to go in and get a bowl of soup, that broth was made here today. Maybe you go in and, and you're getting vegetables off of the line. Well, that was a head of broccoli this morning that was being cut up. There's no bags of frozen anything coming into the, into the dining hall. There is no um, processed foods really. If, they, if the dining hall um, wants to serve something that is processed, they have to get special permission from their home company. Um, so every day French fries are, are made and they're cut here on campus and made um, so you feel different once you have eaten inside our dining hall. Usually when we say that Bridgewater is a private school, most students and family members go, oh my gosh, you're expensive. And it is true. We carry initially a, a larger price tag than, than most of our state school competitors. Um, but we recognize that and Bridgewater also offers a lot of merit aid and financial aid to students. So every student that is admitted to Bridgewater will receive one of these merit scholarships ranging between $21,000 and $30,000. Um, our out-of-state students will receive the out-of-state scholarship, $3,500. And then if the student is a member of the Church of the Brethren, it's either $2,500 grant or $1,500 grant, depending if they live on campus or not. Um, we encourage all students and families to file the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, that opened up October 1 and is currently live. So you, if you are a senior this year, you want to fill out the 2021-2022 FAFSA. Um, Bridgewater has a priority deadline of March the 1st to file that. We try to make the admissions process pretty simple. Um, we have two ways for students to apply. You can either go to bridgewater.edu and submit our online application, or you can go to the Common App and submit our, our the Common App to us. We are test optional. Um, we have an admissions process for being test optional and a scholarship process for test optional. So these scholarships here, we mentioned the $21,000 to $30,000 range. Those scholarships are for test optional and non-test optional students alike. There is no difference between the two. Um, we primarily operate on a rolling admissions process, but we have an early action deadline of November the 15th. So that is one month from today. So what our early action says, if you submit your application and your supplemental item or items, depending if you apply a test optional or not, if you submit both of those things by November 15th, we are guaranteeing that you will have an admissions decision and a merit scholarship award in hand by November, or December 1st. If you apply early action, do all the admission stuff and file your FAFSA by November 15th, we're guaranteeing by December 1st, you will also have a full financial aid package in hand as well, okay? If you apply but do not apply either do not apply early action, um, you will be thrown in or sort of your application will be reviewed through our rolling admissions process. So it takes us about three weeks by the time your application is submitted and completed. It takes us about two to three weeks to have it reviewed and a decision um, in hand to students. Supplemental items, if you apply test optional, the only thing we need is your official high school transcript. And there's several different ways that you're Guidance office can send that to us. They can send it to us electronically through parchment. Um, they can email it to us or they can drop it in the mail to us as well. If a student does not apply test optional, we will need to receive his or her SAT or ACT scores. They can self-report them on the application or send us, email us a PDF of their student report page. Okay. Um, and the last bit of information I've got for you is come visit. We are open and allowing students to visit campus with us in person. We do visits Monday through Friday um, from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. And we'd love to have you come and visit campus with us. We're doing a variety of virtual events as well. Um, so we'd love to be able to get you on campus and to show you around and answer any questions that you might have. That gets me to the end of my slides. And I will wait here a couple minutes and see if anybody has any questions to come in through the Q&A.
Here, a question came in. And the question is, what is your favorite tradition on campus? I have two favorite traditions on campus. One happens at the beginning of the academic year. So new students move in on typically the Thursday before classes begin. And our alumni association um, reaches out to alumni, faculty, and staff and says, who wants to participate in Eagles Wee Hall? And what it is, it is alumni, faculty, staff that come back to campus or, or come to campus that day for work and they help the new students move in. So as a new student and their family arrives on campus and pulls up and from the residence hall, there's a group of alumni, faculty, and staff that are there that are welcoming them and then help carrying their things up to their room, which is really nice. Other tradition I really enjoy is homecoming. Um, the Friday night before homecoming or Friday night of homecoming, there's a big bonfire and festivities, but the real neat part is there's fireworks that go off. The college sponsors fireworks. And it's really just a neat time on campus to see the different generations of alumni and current students back on campus and what those interactions are like. That is a good question. So another question came in and says, how do you consider homeschool applicants? And we consider them just as we do any other applicant that comes through. We would need a copy of your transcripts um, and SAT or ACT scores. We look at those students in the same way um, that we do any other student attending public school or, or private school in that regard. Each year um, we enroll, I'm gonna say a small handful, five or so students that um, are homeschooled. So it is a population that we're used to working with um, and used to um, meeting them and reviewing their documents. Another question came in, it's about majors. What are the most popular majors? Um, so business admin is our most popular major, followed by biology. Um, and then it is um, communication studies, psychology, and liberal studies. Our liberal studies program partners with our pre-K through um, 12, or pre-K pre through six, excuse me, teaching certification. Virginia does education just a little bit differently and in terms of education majors and certifications. Students that want to um, teach um, will have a specific major and there is no school that offers an education major or minor. So they'll have a specific major they want to teach and then go through the teaching licensure program. And then Virginia has reciprocity with 45 states. So their teaching licensure is good just about anywhere in the US. Our teaching education program is really strong for us. Um, we have 100% placement rate for our student teachers, and um, very often those students have, have job offers before they walk across the stage in graduation. I'm looking to see if we have any other questions coming in. Slow down a little bit. So, well, I appreciate you checking us out. If you're watching this live tonight, I appreciate you joining me here tonight. If you're watching this as a recording, I appreciate you taking time to, to watch this presentation. I would encourage you that if you are a high school junior watching this, um, come take a look. Come down and either visit us in person or join us one of, in one of our virtual opportunities. You know, it's, it's well worth your time to, to take some additional looks here. If you're a current high school senior and haven't applied, we would encourage you to apply. Um, early action deadline is November 15th, so it is just over a week or a month away. Um, if you have applied, really encourage you to get your transcripts and or test scores in so we can get that application reviewed. Um, and if you are admissible, to award you a merit scholarship as well. So thanks again for joining me today. Really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule and see, checking out if Bridgewater is the right fit. Take care. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for an additional session at PACAC.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other session recordings at PACAC.org. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good evening.